Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to um, set up Git on Windows, end to end, you know, all my favorite tools, my favorite, uh, you know, configuration of Git, and let's get started. Alright, so first of all, to check if you even have Git installed, the first thing is to go to the command line, or in this case, I'm going to use PowerShell because I prefer PowerShell a lot. Let's just come here and do a git command. Just type git. Yeah, you should see it should say something like this red saying that uh, what's the word? Okay, a git is not a recognized command let yada yada yada. So before we start, let's um, let's first clean up this command line. This looks really awful. So first of all, oh, shouldn't have done that. Let's run PowerShell again. This time, pin it to taskbar because I use it a lot. Um, the next thing is to change a few things like the font size. So first of all, you would want to use a uh, consolas. This is probably my favorite uh, font on Windows. And as for the layout, I usually give this 30. So one trick of getting rid of this uh, bar by the side is to make sure that both the height and the, the screen buffer height and the window height are the same. So when you do that, the bars go away. Uh, the next step is to let's go back. The next step is to change the color. So changing the color is coming here, making this red. Also, another tip is to reduce this to like maybe 90% opacity so that it looks kind of cute like this. So run it again just to be sure. Uh, again, I, I guess that's much. This tends to happen in Windows. You may have to do it twice for some strange reason. It's a crazy bug, but it's good as I showed it in this video because most people don't really. It can be frustrated at times where you have to do it twice, but that's okay. That's okay. So we're good, All right? Um, let's close it, run it one last time. Now it should take effect. Good. Next step is I typically like to create a new desktop put my command line in that desktop and make it full screen so that I can easily just switch between the two you know like if I'm like working on, a, on an app or something just switch to command line instantly using the Windows control and either forward or backward okay now if you notice some of the uh, icons here are not available on this side so to fix that let me go to let's go to multitasking multitasking settings and then I specify that I want my okay, this for all tab this should only be on the desktop I'm using but for the taskbar it should be across all applications so with that said I can now maximize this and I'm good to go well technically I prefer having even three screens not even two so let me create that move this here and I'm good to go PowerShell wise okay so PowerShell is up and running and we have we can easily jump through the different um, the different desktops the next thing we need to do now to set up git is to actually download the git itself so to get the installer let me bring this down here so to get the installer I just search for download git that's all nothing fancy that now brings me to the git download page. I click that. It tells me download for Windows. I think the latest as at this as a time of recording is 2.13. I want the 64 bit because I'm running on a 64 bit Windows 10 and it's done. Now that it's done, let's come run the app. Run the installer. That now um, launches the git setup. So let me drop this. Remove this icon. I don't like any icons on my desktop. So uh, we come here install it me personally I like to install everything on D so at this point this is where you have like git bash is um, explorer integration I personally don't mind it it's for things like right click and so on and so forth I like to leave my uh, right clicks clean and all then this is also optional whether you want true type fonts but since we're using consolas it's not a big deal um, git LFS all these are important so let's leave them the next step is to tell you okay it wants to install in start menu which is fine and that now brings us here okay if you want to use git from a bash directly you can select this but i don't like that 
but if you by default as you can see it, it picks a, a git from command prompt this allows you call you know git uh, commands directly from your windows or powershell which is what we need so we click next open ssl library let's leave that the way it is we click next um so this has to do with uh line ending so there is this you know war that happened back in the day in the early days of uh, operating systems where windows used to use uh, windows used to use a crlf that's a mixture of carriage return and line forward characters while um, linux and mac and unix style were using just line forward and that caused a lot of controversy but suffice to say like like you know just use this one because what it does is when you type once you you have text that has the carriage return line forward if you check it into source control it gets converted to just line forward characters that causes some weird bugs in windows but nothing to worry about this should be the best unless you know you absolutely know what you're doing okay then we just click next and finally we have uh, this terminal for min tty I think the, the terminal emulator or something like that me personally I prefer to just use the default console window okay let's click next now this is important if you don't check this you will run into trouble with uh connecting to certain like endpoints in windows so this allows this git credential manager allows it as such that once you commit when you connect to a git repository that is using ssl https it will use the windows uh, uh, manager which means that once you log in once you won't need to keep logging in over and over again um so this is good it's, it's good you leave it there and then it installs so it shouldn't take too long to install so while it's installing, um, as you can see, we just went through all the default settings. There was really no change we needed to make. So at that least, you should have that in mind. And the default settings are usually almost always right. All right, so let's wait for it to finish. And it is done. Okay, so let's just chill a little so once this is done you can just finish it shows you some release notes and all we don't care about that now let's head over to this so we should be able to have git okay not yet i need to restart the command line so just say git now putting it into like full screen mode like this was alt enter that's all you need to press to do this so let's run git as you can see it's showing us that git is working another way you can check is to use version it shows us that the version is there now i'm not a fan of this this looks too, way too tiny so let me reduce the font a bit um let's come here properties let's go to layout change this back to 30 and let's increase the font just a little bit from consolas to size 14. maybe let's make it size 16. okay so that it is much much clearer let me close launch it again just to be sure that yes it's taking effect so this is a lot clearer now the next step is we could just say git version just to see what version it is and as you can see it's 2.3.1 windows and it's good the next step is let's go to a repository right so if i go to if i cd to my d drive where i have my projects right uh let's see i don't have any major projects so let me just go to the temp directory and inside that i have nothing so let's say i were to make a sample project so let's call this sample and in this sample project i just seeded into it and there was nothing there okay now if i if i come and uh, use git in it this initializes a git repository there but as you can see it's only when i do git status that i actually notice what's going on there's actually a git repository so to aid with using command line um we're using the command line there is this tool called posh git so you just go to google and search for it so let's say posh posh git we click this we click the copy or clone we copy the, the clone url then we'll just say git so let me go back to my projects folder let me create a a folder for powershell because it's a powershell 
um, script library let me cd into it and let me go ahead and clone it all right so the cloning is done now um, now that the cloning is done if i cd into it push git right all i need to do is to run the script but before i run the script i need to make sure that my powershell can run scripts that were downloaded from the internet for that we need to do what's called the get execution policy that tells us what the policy is for powershell with respect to running scripts that we are not originated on this system and as you can see it's restricted so that means this wouldn't work so what we need to do now is say set execution policy and set the execution policy to remote signed okay this allows so it will say it's about to do this yes now this wouldn't work the reason is that we need to run powershell in administrator so let me quickly get that out of the way powershell as administrator and then i'll say set execution policy remote signed by doing this it now says it's going to change the execution policies blah 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 yes make sure you read it though i've read this over and over again that's why i'm kind of jaded but once you set the execution policy that's all you need let's go back and let's let's go back to our d drive our projects folder and let's look for our powershell okay now we run we open we go to the posh git directory and the posh git directory uh this is where we now need to execute the posh git itself so you would now need to run install.ps1 okay that's this install.ps1 here this is how you execute uh, scripts in powershell with the dot slash so by executing it voila we now have this thing that is that gets appended to our uh should i say location or prompt and it tells us the status of a git repository so for example it shows us that uh this is a git repository and that we are on the master branch so if we were to change branches that would be as well and it also does things like auto complete so if you notice i typed bra and did a tab and it completed it so that's about it um, okay yeah one last thing um, the last thing we need to do is set up our username and password username and email so to do that we say git config dash dash global i guess not sure but we say user dot email and we set it to mine which is what it tries at gmail.com and that is set so also i also want to um, set my my name to od od and that is set as well so where these configurations are stored are here let's see uh, that is and if you go to my c drive my c drive sorry yeah go to your users of course there's od and here you will see a dot git folder okay, yeah yeah sorry yeah this is correct so open it with dot git when we do that you will notice that yeah it's it has set my name access yeah I set both my name and my um, email could also change this here and save and I'm good that's that's it folks that's how you set up gates in Windows and that and hopefully you will find that useful um, to use it from the command line it's something I, I personally prefer so thank you very much thank you for watching and see you next time bye